a few days back, I came across a video dishing out distorted version of the investigation and inquiry reports conducted on the death of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose in 1945. This triggered the passion in me for Netaji to demolish the misinformation propaganda. I made a video bringing out all the fallacies in their presentation. The video garnered unprecedented number of views, but was brought down YouTube giving me this reason. Nevertheless, presented here are the same misleading narrations by them, followed by factual presentation supported by documentary evidences. There were about 14 or 15 passengers in the plane. No, mister. Not 14 or 15. There were 13 passengers. Refer the investigative reports, not corridor gossips. Netaji, Rahman, Shide, Nonogaki, Sakai, Takahashi, Arai, Takizawa, Kono, Ayogi, Okishita, and two other crew. List of passengers, their sitting position, location of petrol tanks, dorsal turret, propeller that caused the accident, the diagram from the Japanese investigative report. We find those who were going to Manchuria were dead and those who were going to Tokyo were all alive. No, mister. Rahman was going to no other place other than where Netaji was going. If it was Manchuria, then Rahman was also going to Manchuria. Rahman survived, Netaji didn't. A wrong analogy. In fact, Rahman was also going to Manchuria as shown in records. I quote, At Dairen, Shide, Netaji and Rahman were to get off the plane. Unquote. There were about 30 odd eyewitnesses who appeared in front of various inquiries at different points of time. Oh my God! 30 odd eyewitnesses making up stories. There were 11 eyewitnesses to Netaji's crash and or death interrogated. Six survivors, two doctors, two groundsmen and one interpreter. From where did you get the remaining 19? Only one person had known Netaji beforehand, Juichi Nakamura. Nobody knew Netaji, not a single person. Everybody was shown one person and told this is Subhas Chandra Bose. Not only Nakamura, all the six survivors interviewed knew Netaji. They knew him from Saigon where they were introduced to Netaji on 17th in front of whole team of Japanese officials left behind and INA officials, Gulzara Singh, Pritam Singh, Ayar, Abidali and Devnath and other Indians. They dined together the previous night at Torin. So, seven of the 11 eyewitnesses knew Netaji from before the air crash. Don't mislead the viewers that only one new Netaji. Array told Shah Nawaz committee, he overheard Netaji telling Habib that he didn't want to go to Dharan anymore. He wanted the plane to land in Mukudain. Array did not say Netaji didn't want to go to Dharan anymore. He didn't even say he wanted the plane to land in Mukudain. You're putting words into Array's mouth. This is a gross violation. Arai said Netaji's intention was to proceed to Mukuden. This is what he had overheard. And this could be accomplished by road journey from Darren. We all know at that time Netaji had no control over the pilot or on the route. You are twisting facts. There was no one to receive Netaji and other members at Taihoku. That appears little strange. After all, he was head of a state. You are again misinforming the viewers. Shogetaka Suriuri 
staff intelligence officer received advance information of their arrival and went to the airport to receive them. Simple thing, mister. If there was no advance information, how could the plane land? This was the flight plan from Saigon. Saigon to Torin, to Haitu, to Taihuku, to Dairen, to Tokyo. The plane skipped Haitu and was to touch Dairen, not Mukuden, as has been told by them a few slides earlier. According to Nonogaki, the flight arrived at noon and left at 2 p.m. According to Takahashi, the flight arrived around 11 and took off around 12.30. Kono agreed with Nonogaki. Sakai said, flight arrived at noon but took off at 1 p.m. Habib on the other hand said, flight arrived at 2 p.m. and took off at 2.35 p.m. Is this minor discrepancy? There is nothing surprising at different people giving different time. Don't make an issue out of your ignorance. What you are unable to read, realize and notice is that these people were passing through Taiwan coming from different countries, Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, Indochina, each having their own time on them. So their watches were set differently, none for Taiwan, as they were just passing through there. Their time range varied from GMT plus 730 hours to plus 900 hours. In addition, in many places, local time differed from standard time. So a difference of 2-3 hours is not an issue at all. Before the plane crashed, what height did it gain? According to Nonogaki, the plane reached 20 meters. Kono said 30 meters. Sakai said 50 meters. Arei said 500 meters. Yamamoto said 30 to 40 meters. Minor discrepancy. When you are talking about the altitude of the plane from where it fell, one should have some idea of the plane they were flying in. They were flying in a bomber, Mitsubishi Ki-21. It was rather naive to ask the passengers inside to say from what height the plane fell. The plane had no windows. All were squatting on the floor. It had just the pilot's 180 degree window and a dorsal turret above. There was no chance of the passengers seeing the outside at the time of the fall to give an idea of the height. In a conventional closed elevator, can you guess which floor you are at? 4th or 40th? unless you see the indicator. So it is pointless to find out discrepancies in the height. Diverse range of height comes from Habiba Rahman. When he talked to S.A. in 1945, Habib said the flights reached between 2,200 to 3,000 feet. Sorry. Habib told Ayer that the plane reached 200 to 300 feet. Not what you say. This is Ayaz's official deposition to Shanawas Khan committee. Never go by what is in books written by individuals, whether Ayar, Sanyal, Dhar or Ghosh. Go by legally tenable documents. How did the plane fall? Habib said to Shahnawaz committee in 1956, he heard the noise coming from right side. To CSDIC in 1945 he said noise came from nose. These are things we do not ordinarily forget. You have yourself already given answer to the suspicion raised by you. It is completely understandable that, when a plane crashing, nobody can be at a proper frame of mind, and nobody can give accurate information. And yet, you expect in that situation Habibu to remember accurately whether the bang noise from outside came from the front right or front front. Eh? Where did the plane fall? Habib said the plane fell one or two miles outside the airport. Nonogaki said the plane crashed on the runway. Takahashi said, just ahead of the runway. 
Sakai said, at the end of the runway. Yamamoto said, at the boundary of the airfield. Japanese investigation and Shah Nawaz Khan inquiry both separately determined that the plane fell within the airfield boundary. This is the aerial photographic view of the Taihoku airfield just after World War II. This is the site of crash marked by Nonogaki. This marked by Takahashi. This given by Yamamoto ground engineer. And this concluded by the Japanese investigative team. Airport ground engineer. All survivors except Rahman reported the same. So it is absolutely clear that Rahman was incorrect in his judgment. What else? Nonogaki said, the plane fell on its right side. Kono said the same. Takahashi said, the plane fell on its nose. Yamamoto said, the plane fell on its left side. Which we take, left or right. The reports make it amply clear that the plane nosedived. And after nosediving, it surely didn't get stuck like an arrow with its tail up in the air. It dragged itself for 20-30 meters, wobbled both sides till it rested. Yamamoto said, he went and rescued the passengers from the rear door. Oh, to what extent you go on misinforming people? Yamamoto clearly recorded, I could not go near the plane because ammunition was flying. My men seeing me came towards me. I encouraged them to go near the plane and rescue the people inside. And what do you mean by rear door? The plane doesn't have a front door. What happened after the plane crashed? Habib said, the fore portion of the plane split. He told Netaji, R.D. Say Nikliye. Yes, the plane split in front two, but not into two. Netaji escaped through the crack developed there. The crack that Kono had described as the joint where the plane bent inwards. Kono said, he broke open the plastic cover over the pilot and escaped. So, who escaped first? Netaji or Kono? It appears that both went out through the same route. The detailed deposition clearly mentions that Kono being in front of Netaji escaped through the upper lid of the pilot seat as he being a pilot is used to that route. Whereas Netaji behind him escaped through the crack gap that developed in the fuselage due to the bending of the nose portion. Why confuse unsuspecting viewers, listeners and readers? SAIR knew that Netaji was going to Manchuria. Yet, he drafted the news for the announcement of death, that Netaji was going to Tokyo. This was a deception. This was no deception at all. At Bangkok, after consultation with General Isoda, it was decided that Netaji will go to Tokyo first, thank the Japanese government and then proceed to Russia through Manchuria. Ayer wrote what he knew till the time he got separated from Netaji at Saigon. Sharad Bose, later, came to disbelieve the plane crash and expressed that vociferously. Read the newspaper properly. It says, Sarat Bose has no information of Netaji, but he believes Netaji to be alive. It is nothing but belief. The conspiracy theorists play with such beliefs to puzzle the reader's mind. They have scant regard for the hard evidence. Sharad Bose flashed all over the front page of his own newspaper, claiming that Suvas was in China. Note the second line onwards. It reads, Sarat Bose asserts, Government possesses information. He doesn't say he has the information. Like a seasoned barrister, he puts the ball in government's court for them to come out with a response. Never go by newspaper headlines. On hearing the news of Netaji's death, Viceroy Wavell, on 24th August, 
wrote to Southeast Asia Command to inquire carefully the news. The Southeast Asian Command did inquire. On 30th August, Admiral Mountbatten requested General MacArthur for an inquiry about the death of Netaji. On 19th September, the preliminary report was submitted to MacArthur. There, among other details, it stated Bose was injured in an air crash on 18th August 1945 and died the same evening. On getting the report, on September 21st, Wavell wrote, According to the Japanese, SC Bose definitely is dead, but I shall be skeptical till further confirmation. He got the confirmation too. The UK Liazo mission in Japan, at the end of its investigation, concluded, It is confirmed as certain that SC Bose died in Taihoku Military Hospital sometime between 7 and 8 p.m. local time on the 18th of August 1945. The conspiracy theorists always give you part of the information, the other part they hide. A series of investigations by the British, the Americans, the British Indian government took place, but none of these established, conclusively, Bose's death. Absolutely untrue. Besides the figures report already mentioned, the British India government conducted an investigation in September 1945 where they found out Bose on his way to the capital Tokyo as a result of an accident at Taihoku at 2 p.m. on the 18th was seriously injured and died at midnight on the same date. The Turner report of October 1946 came out with the finding that after the fourth hour of admission, he appeared to be sinking into unconsciousness. He murmured and muttered in a state of coma, but never regained consciousness. At about 11 p.m., he died. Later, in January 1956, Japan published its detailed report where it rec recorded, in spite of several injections of heart stimulant and artificial aspiration, he could not be saved. The same year, 1956, Taiwan government conducted an investigation on the eyewitnesses. The Taiwanese report cast no doubt on the plane crash and subsequent death of Netaji. Till date, none of the British or American governments claim that they have definite proof of Suvasa's death. Another big fat untruth. A CIA confidential report of 10 September 1948 on forward block comments that after Subhash Chandra Bose's death, forward block was continued by his brother Sharad Chandra Bose. Another CIA report of the same time on Indian leftist parties mentions Bose died in a plane crash in the fall of 1945. In 1947, after partition, the CIA, in their secret report on Sharad Chandra Bose, refers to Netaji as his late brother. Much earlier, on 30th June 1946, the US War Department, while searching for Netaji, writes, nor is there any evidence available to the intelligence division which would indicate that the subject, Bose, is still alive. In 2014, some individual approached CIA to find out if there are any records there of Netaji living beyond 1945. The CIA gave them a 13-page document. The conspiracy theorists have never made public those 13 pages as they contain disappointing news for them. But very slyly, they exhibit this covering letter of the CIA misinforming people that CIA believed Netaji alive in 1964. The KGB, on the other hand, relied on the British investigation and accepted on 25th December 1945 that Subhash Chandra Bose died. They recorded for KGB 
Bose's case is closed. The conspiracy theorists are hiding from viewers these CIA and KGB records which confirm Netaji's death in 1945. It is only the Indian government who have stuck to the story of plane crash. It is only those associated with the Congress party say the same. It is not only the Indian government, but the Jap government, US, UK, Russian and all the governments confirm Netaji's death in 1945. It is not only the Congress party leaders, but also BJP and other party leaders who recognize the fact. Some of the BJP leaders who voluntarily commemorated Netaji's Prayan Divas is shown here. This is present PM Modi's letter appreciating the devotion of the Renkoji temple priest towards Netaji Subhash Chandra Boske Asthiyoke Puja Archana for the last 68 years. The commissions of inquiry, which were appointed by the Congress government, reached the same conclusion by hook or by crook. Hook or by crook? What an unparliamentary language for the parliamentarians. It is the people's representative who judiciously accepted the reports. Not to forget, six other international investigations held prior to the Indian Commissions of Inquiries concluding the same. The six passengers alive and Nakamura, were they going through the same experience? It is difficult to understand. Understood. It's difficult to understand. You need to go back and reread the reports in the light of the observations brought out. Nothing less. As you have seen now, in every minute of their 30 minute video, there is a misinformation, twisting or distorted representation of facts. Many viewers have not gone through the original documents and therefore unable to see facts from fiction. For their benefit, photocopies of extracts from original documents have been shown in this video in contrast to dramatized narration and self-generated drawings dished out by conspiracy theorists. It is now for you to revisit the video to realize the extent of distortion in their presentation and know the facts. Jai Hind!